So welcome back. I'm going to show you guys how to create the front and rear fenders. Now I'm not going to go into like so much detail where it's going to um, we're going to like model everything on the door, but we'll get a good level of good amount of work done. So let's begin. I'm going to create polygon primitives pipe. Go ahead and click on the grid right in the center of that tire. So I'll kind of create the width like that. It says drag to set the height. So in the perspective, we're pretty much going to drag it to the left or to the right. I mean, drag it to the right. It doesn't really matter, honestly, because we're going to delete half of this thing anyways. And now it's asking me to set the thickness. So I'll just click and drag it to the right and voila. Okay. So immediately it's going to take me into the channel box. Okay. Again, if you do not have a channel box editor open, you can just simply click on that stack of layers. We're going to go down into the inputs, polypipe one and change the subdivision axes to a value of 26. Oh yeah, there we go. All right, so now we have that, we're going to right mouse click and hold, go to face, delete that quarter, and then delete those three, the, that one, and that one. Okay. Now we'll go into the top view, or the perspective, and we're going to delete the half of it. So now that we have this little guy in my front view, you could see that the grid lines actually, this is not my front view, this is my back view. So we can't see this geometry. So, what I'm going to do is click on panels orthographic and go to front. All right, so now you can see that little um, geometry. Now my center pivot is off, so I'll go to modify, center pivot, and I'll move it right along this edge. Now I'm gonna turn off the grid in all of my views because I find it a little bit distracting right now. So let's go to our side view, start working. Uh, I'll right mouse click and hold, go to vertex. I'll move these two guys down here. I'll move this one down. And if I press the left arrow, then it will actually allow me to, and I'll press the left, right, up, down, all these arrows to help me pick the, uh, vertex and if it's more convenient just to select it with your mouse tool or your selection tool then it's go ahead and do that whatever whatever tickles your fancy all right so now we have this the outside ring and this outside edge is a little bit too thick for me all right, and I say it's too thick because I want to have a few more edge loops coming along the um, front fender here. And if I have this edge all the way up here, then it's not going to it's not going to be, it's not going to suit what my needs are. So I'll right mouse click, go to edge. I'm going to click on this edge. I'm going to hold Shift and double click here. All right. So if I move this around, you can see that I have the outermost edges selected. I'll press Z to undo. Now, what I'm going to teach you is called the um, it's called the slide edge tool. All right. So if I hold Shift, right mouse click and hold, slide edge tool, or that is simply found under Edit Mesh, slide edge tool. Where are you? I'm so used to the other way around um, holding shift that I sometimes forget it in here so there it is under mesh tools 
Now it says drag with middle mouse button to slide, so I'll hold middle mouse button anywhere and I'll drag it to the right or to the left. And there we go. So that's about how thin I want it to be. Go back in here, modify a few of these vertices. Like that. I think it looks good. And voila. Golden. So it looks good here, however, in the front view, not too appealing, and then in my top view, it's not all that good. Okay, so I'm gonna move this guy over right there, and we're gonna start to modify a few vertices. Okay, so let's go to my front view. I'm sorry, my side and my front view. So I'm gonna start off here. So I right mouse click and hold. Vertex. I'll select these two vertices and I'll move them to the left. Okay, so how far left? There's this double line right here. Right, there's this line here and this line here. So I'm gonna move it right along this edge here. So let's click this guy. Select those two. And move it there. Go up the chain. And move these guys here. Now I try to talk a little bit more during these tutorials because I don't really do the like time lapse version. So I don't know. I think it there's a, a place for the time lapse. I don't use it because of several reasons, and I think that you know one of the biggest reasons is, is that when I begin working on a project that's like fairly new, I I want to know everything. I want to know what the person's thinking. I want to know why the person's making the decisions that they are choosing to make, and yeah, it's pretty much it. So I'll move these two up. Okay, they're on the line. Now in the front view, you can see how it starts to curve back here. And then in my top view, I kind of chunk it up. I need to, without confusing you too much, you can see that it starts to get a little bit wider here. And that's the reason why we see this space there. All right, so. Those two are fine in my top view. And then it goes to these two and they start to get a little bit wider in the top and also in the side. So I'm gonna use a side view. I'm not gonna move it all the way out because I see in my top view that it's out oh, right there. So I want this thing to curve gradually. You don't wanna do like too much pulling of the vertices, otherwise they'll, they'll be a little um, uneven. Okay, so as this thing starts to come around here, I want to do my very best to get on the inside of this curve. So I'll take these two and move it here. I'll take these two. And you can see in the top view, it's starting to look a little weird. What's going on here? Trust me, looking at enough images of the 69 charger, especially after Fast and the Furious, like the first one that's that's when it really solidified my love for these cars. So if you have a 69 Charger and like you're modeling the car with me, all I have to say in the words of Napoleon down in my lucky, <laughs> I'll, I'll get one one of these days, you know, we'll, we'll go cruise in the country. Um, all right, so that's that, I'll press F. And it's really important after you get finished modeling uh, geometry,
kind of look at it in a few different angles to make sure that things look really smooth and if it looks smooth when it's you know really low poly and I'm gonna turn the wireframe one shaded on then it's actually gonna look pretty good when you press three so I have this kind of like funky angle going on and I'm simply going to add another edge loop here so go to mesh tools insert edge loop option box I'll click on multiple edge loops and I'll keep it at a value of one. I'll click right there. I'll close it. And I'll go to my front view. i move it out a little bit. I'll click on that edge. Move it to the left. So I'm just kind of making a few adjustments. It looks a little bit smoother. Now, if I press three, you can see what's happening. And I'm simply just changing a few things. I'll press one to make sure it's not too far. So I'm just looking at the way this very linear edge curves and it's always really important for us to use our perspective view and our front view and all of our views to get these angles all right so now we're going to duplicate this object control D I'll move it to the back and in my side view I'll press F We need to flip this piece of geometry because in our top view, it has the same shape and the same curve as our front of the car, but we want it to take on a different angle. So I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. So how do we flip this thing? We're gonna click, so this is the Z axis. So I want this side of the geometry to go over here and this to go over here. So it says scale Z, I'll change that to negative one, and voila. All right? Let's click on the front image plane to hide it, and then turn the back image plane on. And now, just to hide this guy and not be confused with what we're going to do with this one, I'm simply going to go to edit, delete by type history, we go to modify, freeze transformations, and we do the same thing with this guy. Modify, freeze transformations, edit, delete by type, history. I'll click on that little fender, add a new layer, and I'll call this front underscore fender. We'll probably be deleting this layer later, but as for now, we just wanna focus on this guy. And let's look at it from the back view. Now this camera is says front and we cannot see that geometry. So let's go to panels, orthographic, and go to back one. Aha. Uh -huh. Now you see that some things do not line up properly. So we're going to need to change that. Okay. So the first thing that I want to do is move this guy out just a tad bit okay. and we're going to change the position of Let's, let's start first start off with changing the position of these vertices. I think that would be a little bit easier before we start to go into all the detail work. Okay. So yeah. So if we get silent, because it is silent, and I'm focusing. 
be seeing on these vertices. This is going to be like the common theme of this particular tutorial. It's moving vertices around, getting everything to align properly. And when we get that, you know, under our belt and get really familiar with this process, everything else should come relatively easier and you'll understand the reasons why I'm doing the things I am and we'll make those decisions together so technically we'll be on the same page all right so now that I have this particular these vertices aligned we're going to go into our back view and try to get these guys to look beautiful now, I have a special delivery, some donuts, so I'm going to take a quick break to snag a Dunkin' Donut from my wonderful friend. Thank you so much for this glazed donut. Yep. Yummy. Thank you. Let's go chocolate donuts. Just one? I'll take one. I'll just grab one. I won't be greedy. Well, this Tish already did not want one. All right. Thank you very much. Welcome. Grab a sip of coffee and let's move these guys. Follow that shape. side view, click on those two, right. so here is just a little bit tricky, alright? This last row, because I see in the top view that it's relatively flat here and I'm going to so I'm looking at a few of these vertices and I see that they don't align with the um, with this edge as much as I would like them to so I'm kind of going back down that row I've already modified this one and then I'll go up that chain of command. And then in my top view, you see I'm moving it to the left. And then it doesn't really match this too much. I'm going to push it out to the right here. I'll select these guys. And then my top view. that so these two so kind of making like this executive decision these guys and these two so I'm just concentrating on shape okay all right so and I'm not going to do too much to change this area because this part of the car needs to connect to the other side and just for a peace of mind I'm going to object mode in this I'll press control 1 to isolate it and I'm going to look at this in several angles, press 3, and what I'm looking for, and like my eye is traveling on this edge, and I'm working my eye all the way around to look for angles, so I'm still looking at this section, angles that do not feel natural, and I, I honestly think that this section here is a little off. If you press 
and hold Control and B. Actually, it's this. Um, Control B. Right, on a Mac, it's Option B, and I do believe on PC it's Control B. You can see this in like silhouette mode. I'll turn the grid off. It might be easier to look at some of the lines. And these two, I think, just need to go back like this. Okay. So I'm really happy with that. I'll press Control One, and in uh, we're gonna bring that front fender back, and this is what we have so far. I'll hide our back image plane, and in the next tutorial, we're going to combine these two and start working on the rough. Um, rough version of the slide. Do I say rough because we're not going to add a lot of detail. We're more than anything just going to try to get some of these lines of the of the door uh, separated and uh, blocked out. When I say blocked out, I'm, I'm using um, just this term to you know teach you guys just you know the way I talk and the way way a lot of people talk um, in this industry when you're really not um, trying to add a lot of detail you're just blocking out basic shapes and patterns and so we'll kind of get to this step here in the next tutorial and then we'll again we'll block out these shapes and go from there. So I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Have a good evening, good night, wonderful day, wherever you're at in this world. I'll see you next tutorial.